This is the Lifestyle Builders Podcast, show 63, The Fast and Furious Family Life with Jay and Jessica Berube. And then it kind of transitioned into just sales, and then it transitioned into an admin position for about a year, which was... <laughs> That was, ugly. Yeah, that wasn't good. <laughs> so ugly. Yeah. Um, Why? Why was it? You can tell him. Jay, had a, Jay didn't have to. Jay chose to fire me, like <laughs> actually fire me after about a year. Hi, Ariana here with a quick PSA about why this topic is so important to us. Tom and I know how challenging it can be to start and run a business, to take care of your loved ones, and on top of it all, to keep a healthy relationship with your spouse. It isn't easy. And that is why we created our Lifestyle Builders Mentorship Program. As a special offer during this very special Couples and Entrepreneurship Month, we'd like to invite you to get started with your first month of Lifestyle Builders for only $1. So if you, and your spouse is welcome too, need more strategy, support and guidance in your business and life, plus people who truly care about you and will keep you accountable, sign up now at tominariana.com slash lbcouples with the code LB Couples. A little bit more about our guests before we dive into the show. Jay and Jessica are architects of change driven by service. Positively impacting the world is their goal through community service, foster care, and numerous other volunteer organizations. As owners of four real estate related companies, they've created a life through business that allows the flexibility and freedom to fulfill their passion of service. Both are active Rotarians and spend every spare moment making memories with their five-year-old adopted twins who are five months apart. All right. I, we had a lot of fun with Jay and Jessica. It was just very lively conversation. I feel like we were, you know, we were joking around and goofing off. And um, I think one of the things that stood out with them is that they had very different personalities similar to the two of us and mm -hmm. just got a different start into business with, you know, Jay already had the business before they even met. And, you know, they started dating, they got married, and Jessica was a teacher, and she got kind of pulled in because she saw what business allowed you, like flexibility and freedom. And Well, not only did she get pulled in, she got pulled in and then eventually fired. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you will have to tune in to hear that story. Uh, so you can only imagine how that goes in a relationship, right? <laughs> yeah. And I mean, they just, it was the reason we picked that title is because everything they did was just very fast and furious. They ended up adopting two adorable kids um, from birth, but the, they were only five months apart. So, you know, it was just a crazy story that, you know, they were like, well, this was life and we just did what we had to well, do. And I think that was the other thing too. Like, you know, they, they just kept sitting, you know, something came up and we just worked through it. And uh, I think that was another theme too, like being parents, that's kind of what happens. Like none of us really know what we're getting into mm -hmm. and we just kind of work through it. And they, see, they just had such a good perspective around a lot of that. Yeah. Yeah, they really did. So with that, we'll let you guys enjoy. All right, everyone. Welcome back to the show. We are here with the Lifestyle Builders podcast in our special Couples and Entrepreneurship Series, and today we've got Jay and Jessica Bayruby. We are so excited to have you guys on with us. Hey, how are you doing? Hi. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so okay, go ahead. First. No, go ahead. Okay. Sorry, we must have had a little delay there. Um, we have got some really cool things to talk about with Jay and Jessica, as you heard in their bio. But first, I kind of want you guys to walk everyone through the timeline because you've got a cool dynamic where, Jay, you already had the business when you met Jessica, and then you've kind of had all these different things happen since then. So walk everyone through just kind of how this started and how your relationship started. Got it. Do you want me to yeah, kind of give, ahead. I'll give you the overview and then Jessica will tell me what I missed. <laughs> yeah, she, I love she it. Do how it goes. Yeah, she's good for that. I love it. <laughs> um, so I moved down to Florida right after college and I was in hospitality for three years. Then one of the suppliers came in and said, Jay, you should go sell something. So like most entrepreneurs, I'm very impulsive and I want to get something when I want to get it. So I signed up for the real estate class right then when he was in front of me and <laughs> then I just jumped I borrowed a thousand dollars bought a brand new car because I figured you know I needed the image I was out there I had to do it um, I was representing a lot of buyers at that time because it was 0405 
uh, 06, where right before we had that shift and I'm in Florida and we mm. got hit the hardest. So people were flipping real estate. When they couldn't flip it anymore, I said, well, do you want to rent the property out? And then they started saying, yes, I grew the property management business along the way. Uh, Jessica and I had met and ha um, then we adopted two kids. And then just recently, uh, about a year ago, we decided to uh, launch a another business. So unfortunately, we're collecting businesses, but um, <laughs> it's, it's good and bad. You know, there's, there's challenges to it. Jessica. You forgot all about me. <laughs> <laughs> I told you. Um, so he didn't just meet me and then we adopted two kids. <laughs> I was a teacher and I was teaching here and um, had a little business on the side as well. But he convinced me to get my real estate license. And ultimately, once I did that, I realized how much I liked it and how much easier it was and less work and more money than teaching and running a business on the side. So mm. that's how I got involved in the business after he had already started it. Gotcha. So, so I'm, you know, very similar to us because we collect businesses as well. <laughs> we, we have three like completely random ones right now. Um, but I'm curious as to when you made the shift from, you know, Jay really just doing this by yourself to then, you know, pulling Jessica in, what did that look like? Cause I know for us, it was the same type of thing. I had the business and then I pulled Ariana in and like we didn't define roles right away. We didn't really figure out like how we work together. And we ran into a lot of challenges because, you know, she was like stepping into the space that I was used to and I was used to like running things. So we just had all these like weird dynamics come up. How did you guys kind of handle that? At the time, we didn't really have a ton of foundational business experience. So we, we learned from making mistakes hmm. uh, and I learned from making a lot of mistakes. Um, but we ended, what's that? Oh, we, yeah. <laughs> we're just sharing a laugh together. He's affirming that. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, so we ended up, uh, just kind of pulling Jessica in, you know, to start in one capacity as far as selling, but not really communicating the, uh, the appropriate way and, and identifying that role. But I know you, you can tell them more about that and how you felt. I've had a lot of, Jay's kind of kept the same role the entire time mm -hmm. that I've been involved with the business. Um, it's grown, but it's been the same role. My role has changed over and over and over, just depending on what's needed at the time. So I started in sales, um, mainly with buyers and a lot of the, our rental uh, business. And then it kind of transitioned into just sales and then it transitioned into an admin position for about a year, which was, <laughs> that was ugly. Yeah, that wasn't good. So ugly. Yeah. Um, Why? Why was it? You can tell him. Jay, had to, Jay didn't have to. Jay chose to fire me, like <laughs> actually fire me after about a year. <laughs> that was about a year ago. That was about a year and a half ago. Um, I was gonna say, so I, I'm going to dive in there quick though. So what did, what did that look like? And, and how did you guys kind of work through that from the personal relationship? Because I know we've had several times where we had like really tough conversations. I mean, tears and everything like, you know, there's always tears. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you know, what do we do going forward from here? Because we just hit some really tough spots when life came up and business challenges came up. Like, how did you guys kind of work through that? We. I mean, the position we, I was in was to fill another position that we needed. Mm. Um, and it just, it turned into a long-term thing, which we never expected. And Jay and I are very different in a lot of ways, in every way, really. So to the way we communicate, the way the things, sometimes the things we value and sometimes the way we handle situations and just every bit of our personalities are very opposite. So it was hard to work under him in that position, essentially, because I would deal with things very different mm. with clients or prospective clients than he would have. So there was a lot of, you know, headbutting. And you know what? I mean, when you don't have the proper setup and you're telling your spouse what to do, and then I know Jessica, it was probably uncomfortable for you at times to um, just be working in that environment yeah. and to be um, alongside the other staff, you know, like I wouldn't feel comfortable if I was in that position, but honestly, when I look back at it, I never really even saw it that way. So, mm -hmm. yeah. so overall, we didn't handle it well. 
<laughs> but we recovered. <laughs> we got through it. Yeah. I was going to say, you know, you like, I'll let Ariane talk in a second because I'm clearly he, dominating he this conversation. But, you know, I, I think what you said earlier, Jay, you guys have learned a lot through the failures and, and all those lessons. Same thing for us. I mean, we've made so many mistakes over the years, but like I look at like people look at where we're at now and they're like, Oh, well you guys have everything together. And it's like, well, you don't see the trail of just like fights and challenges and, you know, lessons learned that got us here. Um, but it's so powerful that you guys can go through those situations and learn from it and then apply that going forward. Yeah. I mean, it's blood, sweat and tears, right? It's, and it's not just in the business and that's why we're here and you're doing what you do because it's about yourself and your family as well, because that all affects it. And, for me, the way I look at it is, number one is mindset. If you don't have the proper mindset, you can't accomplish anything else. And that's a struggle. I have to work on that every day. I mean, I've had my struggles personally. I had, um, I had to quit drinking because I had serious issues. You know, I had, um, I had to drop a bunch of weight because it was extremely unhealthy where I was at at that point. And I just, I had a depression for about a year and a half that I had to overcome. But the way that I look at these things is like, I mean, it sucks during, during that period and you can't do anything about it and you don't, you don't look at it that way, but mm -hmm. everything's an opportunity. That's the way that I see it. If something happens and let's say we lost everything tomorrow, guess what? That's an opportunity for us. And there's always something to look at and so always somewhere to go from there. Yeah, I, I want to dive in a little bit because what you guys talked about is I think something that's an issue not only in the business, but also in the personal life, like in the personal relationship where people enter a relationship and you, you assume that you're going to be equals in all things, you know, as, as partners in your marriage, as parents to your kids, and sometimes as partners in a business. But what it's what it ends up being is that there's always somebody who's a little bit more responsible for certain pieces and certain parts. And when you have all of those complex things all together and you're trying to figure out, well, like who's, who's over here and who's more responsible or who's taking, managing this part of our lives. And then who's managing this part and how are we keeping each other accountable to make sure that each of us is doing the things that we said we would do. I think that starts to get really, really difficult. And like, if you have different personality types, I have a tough time getting, having like a strong, you need to do this in the business with Tom because he's always been the entrepreneur. So I never felt like I could stand up and say, I disagree. We need to do it this way and not freak out internally because I'm going against the grain and I'm a non-confrontational person. So it's a very uncomfortable place for me to be. When it comes to the family life, I'm the complete opposite. I have no problem whatsoever saying, nope, I think we should do this. We're going to go this. We're going to do this with the kids. This is what we got to do in our marriage, in our personal life. Like for me, that's like how I see my priorities are always has always been that way first. So it hasn't been an issue to stand up and say those things. When it comes to the business, I've had to do a lot of growth around that to be comfortable making decisions and being okay with my decisions, being okay if those decisions are bad ones, and being okay to have those conversations with him as a business partner and not a spouse. So I'd love to hear from you, Jessica, like how, how did that look for you? And then how did that change when you got out of that role as the administrator in, in the business? So I can certainly relate with you because I think I'm very, very similar. Um, Jay's, it's always been Jay's business. So I've never felt. And Jessica always <laughs> uses the. <laughs> <laughs> I've never felt. Like I had the right to tell him if I thought something he was doing wasn't going to work or wasn't a good idea. Um, and on the flip side, I feel the same way with family that like I know exactly what to do with the kids and well, I don't know exactly what to do, but I, I feel confident in my decisions with the kids and with our family life and our home life. So I definitely relate to you. Um, so that was difficult. Definitely. Um, especially in an administrative role, because not only did I kind of become in a, posi become in a position of 
being underneath Jay, mm-hmm. so then I felt even less likely to be confrontational about certain things that I believed or didn't believe in. Um, and how that looked afterward was we kind of reestablished my role. Again, right around that time, our son started having some issues, so I just stepped way back. Mm. Um, and only very recently have I stepped back in. So I think it'll be interesting <laughs> to see what happens next. It's tough because we tried like six months ago or, or even less to like start incorporating you into some of that social piece. Mm-hmm. But I mean, things happen unexpectedly and we've had the challenges, you know, with our son. And for me, you know, being the, the lead in the business side, I expect, and you may be the same way, Tom, uh, likely you are, you want what you want when you want it and you want it now. And you, <laughs> want, it now. you want certainty and you want to know what's going to happen. So I'm sure uh, all the entrepreneurs listening to this feel the same way. So even if it's your wife, who I love dearly, sometimes, most of the time, <laughs> she, um, you know, I still want like those, <laughs> you got your tag. <laughs> she's got her tag on her shirt still. It's new. <laughs> oh, it's okay. They want to know. They said, I love it. I love it. It's, it's a new shirt. Yeah. It's got a tag. <laughs> um, but see, I almost forgot where I was. Um, but even if it's my wife, it's still so hard to know that, okay, what we planned is going to happen now isn't going mm-hmm. to happen. And it's my wife that is the person I'm looking at for, but it's not my wife's fault. It's stuff that we're dealing with together. But, you know, that's, that's also on me to make sure I do a mind check. But it's still, it's, I mean, it's tough for, for the both of us. Yeah, well, I was going to say, so one of the biggest challenges that a lot of people come to us with is, you know, how do you guys balance everything, right? You've got three businesses, you've got yeah, two kids. Yeah, well, we'll get to that in a second. <laughs> and, um, and you're married. And so that question comes up all the time. And so one of the things we've figured out is that, you know, we each are obviously our own person and we each have to grow and we each change like as we go through as parents, as, you know, business partners. But then we've also found that obviously the businesses change. So kind of staying connected and checking in on both, you know, the family and then the marriage and then the businesses have been really important for us. So I'm, I'm curious, like, how do you guys, you know, integrate, like that's the word we use, yep. integrate life and business um, how do you guys do that? Especially like you said, when the personal life, you know, comes up and you need to deal with those things. Like, how do you guys manage all that? That's on you. <laughs> no, to answer. To answer. <laughs> uh, you take your personal <laughs> life. I got it. <laughs> uh, so we recently started sitting down every morning at 530 and just communicating. Um, Cause as you know, I'm sure like, the days are busy, the nights are busy, you have kids and school and activities and everything. So 5.30 a.m. is our time. We just quick connect and talk about what's going on. Um, so it's definitely one way we do it. Yeah, it's, that's always a challenge, though, is the communication. I mean, you know, you put in a hard day of work, you, you, you know, you, you have family responsibilities, and then you got bedtime, but before bedtime, you got, you know, dinner. And then all of a sudden, it's what, like 8.30 or mm-hmm. 9 o'clock. And you have other responsibilities to do, but you're wiped. And for me, I'm best in the morning. And at nighttime, I mean, when, that, when I'm wiped at that point, like my brain shuts off and I'm not my best self. So I wouldn't even be good to communicate with Jess at that time. But, we, you know, we always, I think, work on trying to have um, better communication through the day and stuff like that, too. And we implemented for a little bit of time. We sh- I mean, we should go back to it in some way, shape, or form. But, um, but we just started, again, you know, doing our, like, alignments in the morning. But Sharfin, we got that from Sharfin initially, mm-hmm. you know, that whole program. Did you guys – have you guys looked into the, uh, that, that morning part, the congruency? Uh, yeah, we've actually followed that method um, before we knew Alex existed. And then yeah, we found three, him three and Tom years. was like fanboying. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, so, so basically um, when I met Alex this year, what was great was 
like we were sitting at a table listening to him speak and like every time he'd say something, Ariana would like poke me because it's the stuff that like we've done with businesses and then we brought into our personal life as well. And that was one of the big ones, having that daily like congruency, that daily, daily huddle. huddle to just get connected. And like for us, a big thing we've done is we do it for business as well as for our personal life. And we do everything that way. So when we do our weekly reflection meeting and then planning for the next week, the first thing we do is do our personal lives. And so what we found through that is that, you know, everything's interconnected. So by putting those things together and having those meetings, we make sure that not only are we personally, you know, focusing on what's going well and what we can improve on, but we're doing that business wise as well. And it just makes us so much more connected. Yeah. And I found, you know, you, you talked about like when stuff in the personal life happens, sometimes you have to step away from the business. And sometimes that means you don't get to do the things you planned or some of the things that you wanted to do. And what we've found in doing the daily huddles and the weekly syncs and, you know, checking in monthly and quarterly with each other on everything is that we can see where life and business kind of ebb and flow back and forth. And I think it makes you it kind of almost resets your expectations sometimes, you know, like Tom might've had expectations that we were going to do this big thing and we were going to grow the business. And then when you go back and reflect on everything that's happened, you're like, huh, I don't feel so productive this week. Why not? You go back and look, oh, well the kids had this and then we had a family issue and you know, this popped up that we weren't expecting. So it kind of, it allows you to give yourself a little bit of grace when the business doesn't look like you want it to. And the same sort of thing goes for personal life. You know, we hear a lot about the mom guilt. Um, and I do hear some dads talk about the dad guilt, you know, being present when all they want to do is work on the business. When you go back and look, you look at your business and you see everything you've accomplished, or maybe you're in a really busy time of year or you're launching something and you had to put that time in. So maybe you didn't get to accomplish what you wanted with the family, or maybe you didn't get as much time or we weren't as present as you want. But it's the same sort of thing. You know, each, each part of your life has to do a little bit of give and take sometimes. I think we talked about it in a previous episode with a couple where they, they talked about it as seasons. So you go through seasons in your business and you go through seasons in your life. So if you can accept all of that, then you don't get to those points where you're like, oh my gosh, we wanted to do all of these things and we accomplished nothing. It's, oh, look at what we accomplished as a family during this last month. Now let's see if we can take some time and go and accomplish what we want in the business. Absolutely. Absolutely true. Yeah. It's, it's hard to, for me anyway, I mean, I think it's, it's hard for us to make sure that we're on track with not going in separate directions. Mm -hmm. you know? Like Jessica and me, like almost like we're leading two separate lives, like for short periods of times, you know, mm -hmm. because you're handling this, you're handling this. And it's like, okay, well, geez, wouldn't it be nice if we could conquer these things together and support each other more, you know, and I want to be there for, for my wife, my family. And I know you were, you know, you, I think you were talking about, well, yes, of course you were, you were talking about the dad guilt mm -hmm. and, I know I feel that way. So I try to be my best person when I get home, but that does not happen all the time by any means. Yeah. Um, but I want to be good for my wife and my kids. So like, I'm always constantly trying to find good routines to where I can switch it off and then come in and have a different mindset because you have to go from one person to another, mm -hmm. really, I, you know, and that's hard. It's hard for me. Um, and I feel awful when I don't treat my family right. Um, it doesn't mean it doesn't happen, you yeah. know, um, but uh, I'm always working on that for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I, I think, you know, any, any high achievers, any people that are, that are building a business, which most entrepreneurs are, it is tough to, to turn that off and then to even make those transitions. And um, you mentioned routines. That's something I've found over really the last couple of years has helped a lot, you know, so. Um, I'm up in the morning too. Like my morning routine really sets I'm the not. day. <laughs> yeah. We're, we're opposite <laughs> in that respect. Um, but then what I've found is by going through that routine and then really our, our daily huddle in the morning and then our weekly review, one of the things we implemented there was we go through a couple different categories. So how was our energy this week? How was our happiness? How was our work-life integration? And so just by taking a couple of minutes at the end of the week to reflect on that, let's say I wasn't as present that week. 
Ariana can let me know because I need to hear it this week. So I don't let that continue for the next month and the next quarter. And then part of what we do is say, okay, well, what can we do next week? And then when we plan our next week's schedule, we make sure that, you know, for example, we allocate time for that. Um, so we found that by doing that, not just in the business, but also inclu including the personal life, it's made a huge difference. Um, but with that, I'm, I'm curious, Jay, how do you quote unquote, turn it off, you know, because I think that's a challenge for a lot of us out there that are doing these big things. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'll tell you, I, gosh, you know, I, I'm not good at this, but I have to get back into this routine. Like when I come home, like 15 minutes before I come in the door, um, I really just need to have that shift. One thing that's really helped me with any type of mindset is that depression I was telling you about before, like that was legit one entire year, if not what, a year and a half maybe? Mm -hmm. Jesus. Yeah, and um, 2016, January 1st, I, I started my progress and coming out of that. And the biggest thing I can attribute to it is the simplest thing that I taught myself. And I said, okay, I am going to, and I know it's gonna sound odd, but you know, I'm, I'm going to just visualize, I'm gonna close my eyes and visualize elevator doors opening. And when those elevator doors open, those things I don't want in my mind anymore, those negative thoughts, whatever, they're being pushed aside. And what's in front of me is this bright white light with the things that I'm going to enjoy, the things that I love. And um, obviously, m most of the time, that's my family, depending on the day of the week. But <laughs> just kidding. Um, <laughs> I, do, I do that. And that I have to do that all the time. You know, like when, when I was coming out of that depression, I was doing that probably um, constantly, constantly. And I still do it numerous times a day now, um, but it does, it does help. It helps a lot. So Jessica, how, how do you help Jay to kind of turn some of that off? Because I know for me, you know, I always want to do stuff on my own. I always want to solve my problems. But what I found and what we found is that the more outside help we get, and that might just be me asking Ariana for help, but then also like the coaches we hire and everyone we bring in to help us ultimately helps us a lot more. Um, how, how do you guys, you know, help each other with that stuff? Good question. Um, I agree that outside coaching really helps because you kind of always have that person who you're checking in with and holding you accountable and checking in with you. So certainly that helps, Jay. Um, how I help him, I would say, is just communication is the biggest key. You know, when either of us is having a hard time turning it off, turning it on, just being present or just being sane, um, I think there are times where we are just brutally honest and have to say, hey, like, get it together, let's reset. Um, other than that, I mean, it's, how else do I help you turn it off? Um, I don't know. It's just, it's, it's a tough, it's a tough switch and it's something that, that we battle with. I would say that's one of the things that we're definitely, that, um, that we're definitely constantly working on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll share a little bit. Like for me, um, the shifts I've been able to make over the last couple of years, one of the things we do is every, like every year we do it, but every quarter we do it as well is we reflect and we plan. And one of the things that we've started doing that's helped us a lot is setting our goals, but then putting them out on a roadmap over like, let's say the next five years. And so then when we do our business planning, we're always tying that back into our personal goals and like how much time we want to have, how much money we want to have, the, the things and experiences we want to have. So what's helped me is that then when we set business goals, we're doing it in the context of our life. And once we hit those goals, it almost takes a little bit of the, the pressure off, not the pressure, but the, the drive, because it's like, we've done this, we can do more, but we've achieved what we need business wise. And now I can check back in and make sure that we've also achieved what we want life wise. Um, so I, I think, you know, it's interesting because we all do it in different ways, but I'm so glad that we're talking about this because these things are a constant challenge. And like, I know you guys have had really good success in your business and it's only, you know, driving more. You guys are launching some new stuff. But what I don't think a lot of people realize is that every level of business that you get to not only brings new challenges in the business and being the leader of that business, but then also brings, you know, new challenges in the personal life and how you kind of manage all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You, you know what, when you, when you were talking about that, I think we used to be better at that. 
And then, you know, nine, 12 months ago, that's when we really started getting derailed when we had our challenges with our son. Cause I don't know if I, no, I think you probably do know this, but Jessica and the kids had to go to Wisconsin for three months. So we were away that whole time. I only saw them, I think, what, three times during that period? Yeah, a handful of times. Yeah. yeah. So that was tough. So it's hard to align, obviously, when, mm -hmm. when, you're, when you're not with each other. I mean, it's nearly impossible because, I mean, I, know, I can only imagine how you felt being with the kids all the time nonstop, you know, and trying to communicate in that way. It's, mm -hmm. It was really hard, and that kind of threw us off. And that only mm -hmm. ended what? Like, I mean, you guys came back two, two months, months ago? ago? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And I want to dive in there too, because I think one of the biggest things that a lot of entrepreneurs struggle with is you, you've got your business and you've got your relationship and things are moving along. And when you add kids to the mix, life sometimes just gets thrown into an upheaval and you're stuck trying to one, take care of the kids, but two, also figure out like what's up and what's down and how do you find, like, how do you ground yourself and figure out where home is again so that things can start to, you know, continue moving forward. So how, how was that? Like, how did that change what you had when you guys brought kids into the mix? The crazy thing is, is that when I think back to when we adopted two kids, five months apart, <laughs> but our first one, crazy. I know, I wouldn't recommend doing it that way, but we did it. We applied for adoption just three weeks before we got our son. Wow. So the whole child like bearing process was so quick for us. And at the time, honestly, because it happened so quickly, I feel like it wasn't a big deal. It was mm. like. We're getting a baby. Okay. <laughs> get a baby. Let's hire a nanny. Let's do this. And it was right in the middle of us like moving our business. And it, it was like a really crazy time business wise as well. And we just did it. We just did it. Like we just did what we had to do. And then we adopted our daughter a few months later and we did it. Mm -hmm. And we had good support. We had a nanny who we really loved. Um, but at the time, we were both working full-time, completely full-time, more than full-time. And we just did it. And so when I look back, I'm like, sometimes I think, how did we do that? And why did it seem so easy at the time? Maybe because it was all a blur. I don't know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but moving forward, I, it seems almost like our difficulties have flipped. So our son, our son specifically started having some serious issues about a year, a little bit more than a year ago, and everything just came to a screeching halt, mm. and now we're having to figure that out. So I, I, I'm feeling that pain. We're feeling that pain now more than ever, ever before. We just dealt with it when it happened. Like, we deal with things impulsively, <laughs> with <quick> decisions, <laughs> in ways we regret, but we just dealt with it at first, and it worked, but in the long run... Now we have to kind of backtrack mm -hmm. and figure some things out. You know, something you said there I think is interesting, just the connection I made. I think as parents, we just deal with things, like you yeah. said, because none of us, like usually we're not prepared for business, no. but we're definitely not prepared for being parents. And like, I remember I'd never changed a diaper. Like the first day we brought um, our daughter home, I'm like, I can't believe they just let us leave the hospital with this human <laughs> life. Right. And, um, but if I look back at it, I mean, like our kids right. are amazing and, you know, we've figured it out along the way because we've had to. And, um, I think that's an important thing. And because you guys had such a short amount of time, it wasn't like you had a year to kind of think about it and overthink about it. Probably in a lot of cases, you guys just did it. Um, so I think that's a huge uh, testament to you guys. And, you know, really, I think a lot of parents would probably naturally do that. Whereas maybe some non-parents want it because they've never really been forced into that situation. Mm -hmm. Well, and I think it goes back to those seasons we were talking about too, you know, kids have seasons. So, there are some people where they're like, oh my God, the infant stage was the best. We just did what we had to do and it didn't seem that bad. And you got some people who are like, oh my God, it was the worst time ever. And then it does tend to shift sometimes. You know, you have those seasons that seem a little easier and then you get into some of the older seasons and it, things change to the point where maybe some parts are easier, but then some things are much, much harder, you know, dealing with school and dealing with starting to get into activities and dealing with, you know, if they have uh, any sort of disabilities or learning issues and stuff like that. Like 
you don't see that when they're an infant sometimes, but then as they start to age, these new problems arise and you're stuck back at the beginning, like, okay, now we've got to figure out how to deal with this. And then how does the business fit into all of that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And funny story, like the impulsivity part of it and the massive action piece. Um, when Jessica, when, when we found out that, that Lincoln was, um, that he was born and we had the opportunity to adopt him, Jessica was in California, what, San Francisco? Yeah. And, um, and she said, Jay, the adoption agent, she just called me and they have a potential baby for us. And I said, oh, okay. She said, can you go by there? I said, when? Today? Tomorrow? She's like, right now. I was like, <laughs> oh, okay. She's like, I need, I need to be told what to do because the things that I don't know, I, like, I really don't know, you know? Um, so I go over there and then I ask, uh, I ask the lady, just like you were saying, Tom, um, like they let me leave the hospital with the kid. Um, so... <laughs> We, I met Lincoln, you know, we didn't carry him, we weren't prepared for it, but um, I asked the, um, the adoption lady, I said, um, so if I say yes, he, he's ours, I can, I can take him home, you know, like, <laughs> I, he's going to be ours, like, we can do that, you know, <laughs> unreal, and Jessica is um, in San Francisco, and she's shopping for baby strollers now at that point, yeah. so, wow, yeah. quickly. That's very, and that's good. That's just crazy. But I think, you know, like everyone's got the crazy kid stories, you know, whether it's adopting a kid or having a kid, somebody had a crazy story about when they had kids come into their lives. And I think that's just, you know, as much as we love them, they do throw in those like, oh, we're going to take a quick U-turn and go this way. And then you're still trying to figure out, okay, now what do we do? <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, you know, that's, um, I think as, as I'm just kind of reflecting on this whole conversation, we as entrepreneurs are obviously very different because I, I don't think, you know, someone who was an entrepreneur and wasn't used to some of that impulsivity probably would have been able to react in that same way in that situation, you know, because I look at a lot of what we're able to do now and it's really the, the challenges and the lessons we've learned and having to be a leader in business. Um, but with that, I've also found that like over the years I've had, some of the biggest insights have been by somebody from the outside asking a question or sharing an insight that they see with us that we didn't see. So I'm curious, is there any big like kind of um, outside influences or turning points where somebody said something that just kind of had a light bulb go off or really like helped kind of shift you guys back into the right direction when maybe you're going through some of those challenges? What do you think? So, so I'll, I'll share, I'll share a quick one that just one that always stands out to me for a long time. I had had success in business and I was almost like ashamed to ask for help because I'm like, well, I've had this success. If I ask for help now, like to get to that next level, is it going to seem like I'm weak or I don't know what I'm doing? And so I actually spent like a couple of years probably stuck at like the same point as a result of that. Um, but it was the second that I started kind of like I, I had a mentor who asked me some of these questions and really kind of pushed me outside of my comfort zone. And once I started asking for more help, it was almost like it was a snowball that, man, all these people can actually help me get to the next level. Um, you know, was there anything like that? Yes. Now that I understand the question, <laughs> um, I, um, for years, like I was hitting like this glass ceiling, you know, like, and I just, I couldn't push through and that was super frustrating. Um, but I've always, like, I've been trying to like, I've always, I've always wanted to grow, you know, like when I, um, when I had quit drinking, like around that time, I started getting immersed into Tony Robbins and, um, I just took massive action with that. And I went to a ton of his different events. I learned a lot about life in general through that. Um, but I'm a big advocate of coaching in every single way and, and mentoring. Like currently we have what, four different coaching, uh, four different coaches and mentors. Yeah. Um, for different either parts of the business mm. or just things that actually relate to our overall life. Mm -hmm. you know? And, um, and without that, then you can't get through the glass ceiling. So yeah, I mean, we've, we've been, we've been stuck big time and it's frustrating. And, you know, we've, we've been able to get out of that through, um, through the help of others for sure. Yeah. I love I, that. I was going to say, I love hearing that too, because 
I don't think a lot of people, like I know back before I achieved like our current level of success, I don't know why, but I didn't realize that people got help. I thought that everyone just did it on their own. And you said you guys have like, you know, four different coaches, like same thing with us. We have, we have coaches in our marriage right now. We have coaches um, to help us with marketing. I have have my own coach. Yeah. We, we each have our own coaches for different areas, but like that's been one of the biggest things that I guess I didn't realize back in the day was how much support you know, people that have success and people that are taking that massive action actually have. Like, I, I don't know. I always thought people like just did everything themselves, maybe because like that's how I always did things growing up. But like once I kind of opened my eyes to that um, and then not even just in business, but also like in our marriage and our personal life, it's been amazing, you know, mm-hmm. what's come from it. Yeah, the, the coaching and um, I think what you were also saying is like that support system. For me, that support system goes into the fact that we have somebody come clean our house, you know, Mm -hmm. five days a week. And that support, because I don't want to be doing that. And I I don't want Jessica to be doing that. We want to be doing other things. Mm -hmm. Um, I was, well, no, I don't really read much. I listen to things, but I was listening to to something about uh, Will Smith and his wife having somebody carry their luggage, you know, from air, you know, it's like, yeah, you know what? They want to engage with their kids. Mm -hmm. Like, in order to do the, in order to achieve the things that we want to achieve, and in order to be successful, like as parents and individuals and and husbands and wives, like we have to have those support systems in place because if not, we won't be able to operate. Mm-hmm. So, like I look at it one way too, uh, is income producing activities, right, or family stuff, you know. But when and work, this is my my thing: income producing activities versus needing to offload. Right. Mm-hmm. So leverage, I want to leverage as much, as much as possible. So I can either be doing income producing activities or spending time with my family, which matters. Yeah. To say that reminds me, go ahead. On that note, we, for a long time, didn't hire the right people or the right number of people to do the jobs that we wanted. And there was a long time where the two of us were doing a lot of jobs that we shouldn't have been doing in the business. And we finally figured out that we could offload that stuff onto somebody else who could do it. Mm -hmm. I think that's a pretty common problem. I think a lot of people, you get into like that survive mode where you, you're doing all the stuff that needs to be done. And it's like, you almost forget like, Oh, Hey, there's probably somebody out there that could totally do this for us and maybe do it better than I'm doing it. And it'll free my time up to go and do the things that I'm really good at and that I enjoy. Um, I know I had that, that struggle when we, were I was doing the inventory ordering for our wine and liquor store. I don't even drink much wine and liquor. So I was just, you know, kind of flying by the seat of my pants. I had reports that I would look at and I wasn't actually at the store. I didn't know what people were really ordering or asking for. So we, we finally delegated that to one of our employees who loves everything about wine and liquor, like all kinds. He works in the store. He talks to the customers. And as soon as we trained him, which didn't take that long at all, it was just like this huge weight off of my shoulders and he ended up doing such a better job than I was doing. He saved just like $2,000 one year just by the way that he was ordering things differently. I was like, wow. oh, why did we wait so long to do that? But you know, you get into that mentality and it's having those, those reframes, those mindset shifts that allow you to see those other opportunities out there and to, you know, take action on them. So I love that. And before Tom starts talking again, cause I know it's going to happen. Um, I would love to know what you can each answer if you want to, what's one thing you'd like the listeners to take away from, from your story and from your show here today. Um, I would say a couple of things, right? I can never say one thing. <laughs> um, I would say being honest with yourself is so critical, self-evaluation. One of, the, one of the things that I value in other people, and I need those people around me, is being coachable and accountable. You know, if somebody is not open to improving things, if somebody feels like they know everything, I just, I can't be around them. I can't have anybody on my team that way, mm. you know, because then somebody's set in their ways and it's like, okay, well, let's let's try to, let's try to get through that. And I have to do that myself. So I'm continuously growing. Um, but I think what somebody could take away is be open and honest with yourself and then also, um, be vulnerable because it's, it's like the Facebook thing, you know, 
everybody that's er, not everybody, but most people, right. They show their best self, Mm -hmm. you know, on on social media. They, you know, that's what, that's what people want to do. I mean, that's okay. Right. But they also don't show the vulnerable side and the real side. And it's like, you got to be in touch with that. So don't be, don't be afraid to show it. Yeah. I love that so much. And what about you, Jessica? I was going to say be vulnerable. <laughs> he totally stole it. That's yeah, why I took just two. Had answer to one, <laughs> I would have had he does that to me all the time. Yeah. yeah I was going to say be vulnerable um, for the same reasons as Jay, because I think our society has just, we've created these, especially through social media, like Jay said, um, these perfect picture, perfect lives. When in reality, we all struggle, like we mm-hmm. all have our time. And I think in business, um, being vulnerable will only help you grow and better yourself and your business. And I think it will create a lot more of camaraderie and respect and rapport with employees. Yeah, I love that. You said it better than me, for sure. <laughs> usually how it goes. I say, usually I have this like <laughs> long-winded thing where I hit on a million things and then Ariana like condenses it down. I'm like, yeah, that. <laughs> yeah, I elbowed Jessica first because I wanted her to go if she did. <laughs> Oh my goodness. I love it. All right. So you guys are a lot of fun. You obviously have so much value to give to everyone out there. So where is the best people to best place for people to reach out to you guys and connect? Um, I guess it, right now, if people want to see um, really the real us and the stuff that we go through, Jessica has a, a blog that is, go ahead. It's actually brand new. I've only been doing it for a few weeks, but it's it's tippyandstumpy.com. Oh. So it's kind of our real life. It's not really business related. It's more so about uh, the theme is kind of raising imperfect children in a picture perfect world. Um, and mm-hmm. there's a Facebook group. But otherwise, 239, oh, Real Southwest Florida. Yeah. Um, you know, we have the real estate sales side, which is the real swfl.com. And, um, with the new venture that we're doing, if there's any realtors out there that want to take their business to the next level, then that venture and that course is going to be launched in seven weeks. And that is 90 day roadmap.com. So Ooh, love it. Right. Nine zero, or you can write out 90 and it's still going to get you to the same place. I love that. And I just a quick side note. I couldn't believe both those don't aims were available. So kudos for picking those up. <laughs> yeah. I'm a, I'm a beast. That was, uh, that was, <laughs> Late night go daddy. <laughs> if he's anything like you, he's probably had them and it's just like waiting for the chance. <laughs> All right, you guys, yeah. it's been another great episode with Tom and Ariana, your hosts and lifestyle builders. And we, of course, want to extend a very special thank you to you, Jane, and Jessica, for coming on today and sharing some of your story and the things that you've gone through. So thank you so guys. Thank you. Wow, I can't talk today. Thank you so much, you guys. Thank you so guys You're too. <laughs> All right. And as always, I want you guys to remember, it's your life, your business, your way. We'll see you next time. Bye. Hey, we hope you enjoyed this episode. If you know another entrepreneur who may benefit from hearing this show, we would so appreciate you being a good friend and sharing it with them. And just a reminder, as a special offer during this super special Couples and Entrepreneurship Month, we'd like to invite you to get started with your first month of Lifestyle Builders for only $1. Sign up now at tomandariana.com slash lbcouples with the promo code lbcouples. Are you a Lifestyle Builders podcast fan? We'd love to hear from you. Head on over to tomandariana.com slash iTunes and leave us a review.